Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're addressing the parts of the old law which remain valid and grave today, the Ten Commandments. So far, we've talked about the first four commandments, and now it's time to tackle the fifth, Thou shalt not kill. We've begun talking about whether particular actions can be considered murder, and now it's time to discuss cloning and artificial insemination. Are those things murder? Once again, we need to understand what they are before we can fully understand the ethical implications of them. There are several ways to clone something, most of which don't work properly on mammals. The most successful method today is to remove the nucleus of an egg cell through a process called enucleation and replace it with the genes of an adult organism. If the resulting egg cell survives and remains stable, it will develop into an organism with the same genetic code as the donor. Artificial insemination is simpler to understand. It's the injection of sperm into the body of a female in an attempt to jumpstart pregnancy. So, are these things murder? Let's begin by looking at cloning. Obviously, if neither of these is being done on a person, no murder is involved. Cloning a sheep or a tiger is not a morally reprehensible act, and in fact, could even provide a means of resuscitating endangered species if it could be ironed out into a reliable system. Obviously, then, what we want to discuss is how this act is to be viewed when performed on human beings. No human being has ever been successfully cloned, but supposing that we found a way to do this, would it be murder? There are two parts to the cloning process using the methods stated above. The enucleation of the egg and the implanting of the adult genes. Enucleating an egg cell seems to not be murder. After all, the cell is not yet fertilized and therefore doesn't have its own distinctive genetic code, nor can it be viewed as distinct from the woman who produced it, so removing a component from it is rather like removing components from adult blood cells or skin cells. Nothing about that is murder. The second act of implanting adult genes into the cell, however, is a bit more complicated. What am I doing? Implanting genes into a non-individual cell. Is this action evil by its nature? No. What is my intention in doing this act? To bring new life into the world. Is this an evil intention? No. Do the circumstances make this action evil? This is the problem. There are two big circumstances when it comes to human cloning which make the action morally wrong. The first is that the vast majority of cloned blastocysts prove to be unstable and break down before developing past the embryonic stage. In layman's terms, that means that a human life was created knowing full well that the chances were very much against its surviving. Some would call this reckless endangerment at best, but I don't. In creating the cloned sheep, Dolly, 277 eggs were artificially implanted with adult genes, and less than 10% of those survived to the blastocyst stage. Only one became the Dolly we know and love. That means that the odds of surviving the cloning process is less than 0.4% if you happen to be a sheep. For more complex animals, it would naturally be even lower, and this is why I don't refer to cloning as reckless endangerment. There's a point at which the odds of survival become so slim that a charge of reckless endangerment is no longer sufficient. This is murder through callous negligence if I ever saw it. The other reason why no human cloning is morally acceptable is that even if it succeeded, it would create a human being who either has no parents in the conventional sense, or who was created through curiosity in a lab, rather than by a loving relationship between two parents, and this is a violation of the rights of the child. Last is the issue of artificial insemination. Like human cloning, it's clearly wrong since it violates the right of the child to be born through a union of married, loving parents. However, it's hard to see how it could be considered murder. The one way that artificial insemination could be turned into a form of murder, as I see it, is if something about the inseminating leads to egg cells being fertilized improperly so that they die prematurely as a result of it, but I haven't seen any evidence of that per se. What I have seen, however, is that a related type of fertility procedure known as in vitro fertilization actually involves transferring live embryos into a woman, and this always results in the deaths of most of them. In this case, it is indeed murder to participate in this kind of practice, and wrong even when it's not murder. Next time, what about scandal? Is that murder? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.